Hi everyone, I'm Coach Sierra, the Research and Assessment Specialist for Academic Coaching for World Changers. And today we're going to talk about STAY 9s. STAY 9 is short for Standard 9 or Standard 9s. A STAY 9 score ranges from a low of 1 to a high of 9. It breaks up the normal bell curve, also known as the normal distribution, into nine parts. Therefore, the name STAY 9. For instance, a STAY 9 score of 1, 2, or 3 is below the average, and a STAY 9 of 4, 5, or 6 is average, and a STAY 9 of 7, 8, or 9 is above average. So it ranges from 1 to 9, with 5 being in the middle. So if you see a 4, 5, or 6, you're around the average. If you see a 7, 8, or 9, you're above average. If you see a 1, 2, or 3, you're below average. Let's show that here in the normal bell curve. Here we have our stay nines. It's believed if you score a one, two, or three, you're below average. If you score a six, seven, eight, you're above average. If you score five, four, five, six, you're average, with five being smack dab in the middle. If they ask you the mean of a stay nine, by the way, it would be five. But when we're interpreting the scores, a one to three is considered below, a seven to eight is considered above, and a four to six is considered the average. All right, let's go back to where we were. For example, a stay nine short, a stay nine score can show the general level of achievement of a child below average, average, or above average. A stay nine, a standard nine, is a score that scales a nine point scale as we discussed earlier. It takes the normal bell curve or the normal distribution into nine parts. It can be used to convert any test score into a single digit score. Like Z scores and T scores, which should be familiar to you by now if you've seen my other videos. If not, feel free to watch those videos or book an individual session with me and I can explain Z scores and T scores. Stay nines are a way to assign a number to a member of a group relative to all members in that group. So it helps us compare that person's score to other scores. However, while Z-scores and T-scores can be expressed with decimals like 1.2 or 3.25, C9s are always positive whole numbers from zero to nine. Now for the exam, you'll really be asked about Z-scores and T-scores in reference to the 68, 95, 99 rule, but just some additional information to you that stay nines are considered whole numbers and T-scores and Z-scores are possible to be expressed in decimals. Stay nines are also similar to normal distributions. You can think of these scores as that bell curve that's been sliced up into nine pieces as we've now covered. These pieces are numbered one through nine, starting at the left-hand section with one being on the left and nine being on the right. However, a standard normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. There's a test question that says which type of, which standard score most resembles a standard normal bell curve or a standard normal distribution, and that's a z-score because we know a z-score also has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Stay nines have a mean of five, and it's considered to have a standard deviation of two, which might be confusing because we know we move from one to nine, but if you see a test question and they ask you the standard deviation of a stay nine, just note that it is two. Okay, so here's specific, a more specific example. A person with a score of nine is in the top 4% of scores, while a person with a score of one is considered in the bottom 4%. These types of scores allow you to easily tell if, to easily tell if someone is below or above the mean. So I'm gonna leave this chart here for an, a moment for us to interpret. So stay in score of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and what that means in the bottom 4%, the next bottom 7%, the next bottom 12%, the next bottom 17%, the middle 20%, the next top 17%, the next top 12%, the next top 7%, and the top 4%. So if you're wondering like, whoa, 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 hold on. I understood that the stay nine stands for the standard nine. It's on the normal bell curve. When we look at that chart in, a, for example, in a Helwig book, I understand that they're whole numbers. It breaks up the normal bell curve into nine parts. We can use this to compare scores if someone is above and below the mean. But where did these percentages come from? 
and how am I supposed to know these? Well, this is where you're going to have to memorize, but those percentages come from here in the normal bell curve image when we're interpreting the stay nine line. That the 4% or the one stay nine of one is the bottom 4%, a two is at seven, a three is at 12%, a four is the 17, a five is the 20%, a six is a 17%, a seven is the 12%, then eight is a 7%, and then nine, if you score a standard nine, a stay nine of nine or a standard of nine, you're in the top 4%. All right, let's go back here to that chart. Here are the stay nines and the percentage of scores. Bottom four, next bottom seven, next bottom 12, next bottom 17, middle 20, next top 17, next top 12, next top seven, top four. And here is where it lines up on the normal bell curve chart that many of us are familiar with. So what should you do to study the stay nines? Draw it out, draw it out, draw it out. Draw out this image here with the stay nines. You can line them up with the Z scores and T scores if you find that useful for you, or draw out that chart that I just showed in the other image where you have the stay nines listed out in that box and then the percentages lined up with it. The most the most important or the biggest takeaways I would say is that know that the direct middle of a stay nine is five. Four to six is considered the average when we're interpreting the scores. Three to one is considered below average. Seven to nine is considered above average. One being the lowest, nine being the highest, and then associating those percentages with the spots on the stay nines. All right. I know this video is a bit more numbery, so feel free to rewatch it and rewatch it and rewatch it and rewatch it. Thank you so much for joining. Again, I'm Coach Sierra with Academic Coaching for World Changers. If you have any questions, of course, you can always email us at drpam2020 at gmail.com. You can also check us out on our website at academiccoachingforworldchangers.com. I'm Coach Sierra. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for joining.